Hey everyone, and thanks for checking out this video, which is all about jigs and how to play them on the Baron. Now this is the third episode in my web series on how to play Baron. First episode was all about getting the basics and the basic playing stroke sorted. Second, all about reels. And third, all about jigs. Now, jigs are really important, and along with reels, they're the two dance patterns that you will almost always hear wherever Irish traditional music is played. So as a baron player, it's really important to understand what a jig actually is, and then to have a little repertoire or selection of different patterns that you can use to play along with jigs. I'm Rory and I'm a percussionist and composer. I'm based in London, but I'm originally from County Cork in Ireland, and I've taught really hundreds of people how to play this awesome instrument over the years. Throughout 2020, I'm really looking to pump out some more content online and share some of the tools and skills and approaches that I have for teaching and playing this instrument. Of course, there's so many different approaches to playing the barrel, and this is just what has worked for me and what worked for my students. Today is all about jigs, so grab your barrel and let's get going. So what actually is a jig? Well, a jig is a traditional type of Irish dance and it usually has six beats. It's upbeat, so they're quick. They go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a compound time. So we don't usually count the jig with six counts. We usually count it with two, grouping three and three together. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you're familiar with musical notation, a jig is in six, eight time. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And as I said, they're fast, they're up-tempo, they're not slow. So when I'm teaching and indeed when I'm playing, I find it really helpful to use words as a way to embody different rhythms. So in my last tutorial, we used the word piccadilly for reels. And for jigs, I used the word galloping, galloping with its three syllables. So two rounds of galloping would be one bar or one round of a single jig pattern. So galloping, 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 galloping. This is a really, really helpful tool to use. If you're thinking, is it a jig? Is it a reel? I'm not sure. Or is it something completely different? If you can say galloping, 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 galloping to the music, it's almost certainly going to be a jig. So for example, by just slapping on a jig, galloping, 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 galloping. Galloping, 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 galloping. If you can say galloping round and round to the music, pretty much can guarantee you that that is going to be a jig. Now, the roots of the jig are in traditional English music from the 16th century. They were then adopted by Baroque composers in the Western art or classical music tradition. Composers like J.S. Bach composed loads of jigs, although they spelt them a little bit differently. And whilst they sounded different, the meter or the way in which we count them was pretty much exactly the same. So basically lots of jigs and lots of different types of music, but the best ones are in Irish music. Yeah! <laughs> so
So for the first jig pattern that I'm going to show you today, we're going to take that word galloping and we're going to apply a sticking for each syllable of the word galloping. So the first syllable, ga, is going to be a downstroke. L, upstroke. Ping is going to be a downstroke. Now the downstroke, some people call this downstroke a flat stroke. It's not a full down. It's just a small down. So big down for ga. L is an upstroke. Ping is a flat stroke or a small down stroke. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is a really solid foundation for pretty much all of the jig patterns that we look at in today's tutorial. Now you'll notice when you go from ping back to ga, you'll have a double down stroke, a flat stroke followed by a down. So it might take a little bit of time to get used to that, but just practice it really slowly with a metronome. So by just taking, let's say 45 BPM, beats per minute, and saying that word galloping to it first, Galloping, 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 galloping. And that is the first jig pattern that I'm going to show you today. Just repeating that down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Round and round and round. Get really comfortable with that. Practice it with your metronome. Start 45 BPM and then notch it up in fours or fives. So let's say we go all the way up to 50. Galloping, galloping, galloping. Notch it up five, four or five notches on the metronome each time you practice. As the weeks pass, you'll be flying it and before you know it, you'll be at 155 BPM. Galloping, 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 galloping. So for the moment, for my left hand, the hand that's inside the drum, I'm just keeping it on a bass sound. Just whilst we're learning this new right hand pattern and getting used to this new feel of the jig. I'm just keeping it on that bass sound. So Also, it's worth reminding yourself to keep those shoulders really, really relaxed, elbow really relaxed, wrist really relaxed. Even when we have that double down stroke or the flat stroke followed by the downstroke. We want to keep it really chilled, really relaxed. Don't feel like you have to fight with your baron or with your tipper to get that double down. It should feel really relaxed and really chilled. Now for the second jig pattern that I'm going to show you today, it's a little bit like going back to our first tutorial. I'll link that somewhere in the description or in one of these cards over here where we looked at the basic playing stroke. Now the basic playing stroke is just alternating down, up, 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 down, up. You might remember that. But to make it work with the jig dance pattern, we need to add in some accents. Now accents on the down strokes are dead easy, but accents on the up strokes are a little bit more difficult because we're fighting gravity. Downstroke, it's so much easier to play a really good healthy accent. On the upstrokes, we've got to work a little bit harder. So we're going to take our ga, la, ping, ga, la, ping again. Ga, downstroke. La, upstroke. Ping, downstroke. Second galloping is going to be ga on an upstroke. La, on the downstroke. Ping, on the upstroke. So if we think of the six beats, ga, le, ping, ga, le, ping, six beats would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you'll notice that I accented the first and the fourth beat because of course, don't forget 
the jig is a compound time. So we don't always give each of the six beats equal value. We give um, the first and the fourth more of a push because we're splitting the six beats into two groups of three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. So practice this one again with the metronome, really slow, really steady, getting those accents as even as you possibly can. Again, I'm just sticking with that bass sound inside the drum here. I'll got my camera set up so you can hopefully see that up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And even on that fourth beat, make sure to keep it really nice and relaxed. We wanna get a nice, healthy upstroke. But we don't wanna have the whole arm sort of stressed and tense in order to get that fuller, accented sound. Now, if you're thinking, what is an accent? Apart from, you know, of course, my accent being a sort of a weird Irish slash English accent. An accent is where we just put an extra emphasis or push on a particular stroke. Now, in my second tutorial, we looked at accents. So I'll link that again up here in case anyone wants to check that out. But we looked at accented strokes and how to play them on the Baron. So second pattern, single strokes, down, up, down, up, down, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, galloping, galloping, and so on and so on. And vocalize everything as much as you can. I can't make you do anything, of course. This is a YouTube series. But if you can say it, you can play it. I guarantee you, vocalization is the key, particularly with rhythm patterns, particularly with learning new grooves. If you can say it, you can vocalize it, you can definitely play it. So for the third pattern that I'm going to show you today, it's a combination of the first pattern and then something a little bit different, something called a hemiola. And hemiola is essentially where we get those two groups of three that we have in the jig pattern and we replace it with three groups of two. We have for the first round of six, down, up, down, down, up, down. And the second round of six, we just use singles. So it's a little bit similar to the second pattern that I showed you, just using the singles. But actually, in order to make it a true hemiola, we have to add in accents on the one, two, three, four, five, six. So all together, it sounds like this. This is actually a really nice little jig pattern. If you speed it up, it sounds like this. So this is a really worthwhile one getting used to, and it's also really good for building up that rhythm vocabulary, passing from the one, two, three, four, five, six into the one, two, three, four, five, six. So essentially, this is just a combination of the first and second patterns, but on that second round of six, changing the pattern of the accents. So first bar of this, or first round of six, down, up, down, down, up, down. Second round of six, down, up, down, up, down, up. Accents on the down, 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 or the one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one is really worth practicing with the metronome at a slow, steady tempo. So 60 BPM, a really good place to start, or even slower, whatever speed it takes for you to feel comfortable and confident is the best speed to start practicing it at. Next up, I'm gonna show you a new sound that you can use when you're playing the Baron. So we've already looked at the bass sound. 
We've had a look at the open sound as well. And if you're interested in finding out more about how I find the bass sound and the open sound, you can check out my first tutorial and second tutorial. But the sound that we're gonna have a look at today is what I call the pop sound. It sounds like this. And the pop sound is the loudest or the highest pitch of sounds that I can play on the baron certainly. And we get it by moving our left hand inside the drum, sliding our hand up to the top, and forming a little triangle between our thumb, the tip of our thumb and the tip of our pointing finger and making sure all the palm of the hand and each of the pads of the fingers are really pressing up against the skin and cutting off all of the sound from the rest of the drum. And with our right hand, we wanna create almost like a whipping motion. We don't wanna be kind of too aggressive with it, but we wanna get a really nice strong stroke and we wanna hit the drum right in that triangle. So right in that triangle, but obviously on this side of the drum. So if we apply that to the first jig pattern that we had a look at in this video, the down, up, down, down, up, down. First round of down, up, down, we can play on the bass sound. Down, up, down. And then the beginning of the next down, up, down, we can bring our left hand up inside the drum and get a pop sound. Down, up, down. So for the pop, I'm playing in the triangle that I make you with my left hand. And then for the up, down, I'm moving my hand back down the other side of my hand. So I'm not striking my hand, I'm playing just below my hand. So down, up, down. Back in the right position for the next round of six. And you can probably see as well that I'm starting to move my left hand ever so slightly now, so that when we're not playing the pop sound, my left hand moves down, it slides ever so slightly. We've not really been moving the hand much inside the baron, more getting into a position and working on getting the right sound. Now we're starting to move that left hand inside the drum, and this is a really good place to start moving, going from the pop sound to the bass sound. Pop, bass. So this is a really good place to start, moving from the pop to the bass sounds. Now I'm really accenting those pop strokes, but of course when you're playing it, you'll find it a good balance between that bass and the pop. You don't want to make them too loud or too sort of aggressive so that you know, everyone in the session ducks. It's, it's just about trying to use them in context and use them musically. So the fourth and final jig pattern that I'm gonna show you today is a really nice little groovy number and it uses syncopation. Syncopation is just when we play across the beat and it gives the groove a little lift or a sense of gravity in the middle. Now we're going to think about this groove in one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to think about it really slowly whilst we're learning it because we incorporate not least the right hand, but the left hand also is going to be moving a little bit more using the open sound that we looked at in tutorial two. You can check that out up here or in the description. And we're going to be using the pop sound that we looked at earlier in this tutorial. So have a listen to it first. I'll count really slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So we're going to think about it in six beats. The first six beats go like this. Down, up, down, down, up, down. So the same sticking as our first jig groove, but we start on an open stroke. Going then to the pop, so one, two, three, four. Pop on beat four. One, two, three, four. 
finishing with an open on beat six. One. So practice that really slowly. You can count out loud. You can do the down, up, down, down, up, down, whatever works for you, but make sure that you do vocalize something just to get into the groove of this one. So really steady, really slow first, and then you can speed it up. That's the first part of this groove. The second part of the groove, we don't actually play on beat one or two. This is the syncopated part of the groove where that open stroke from beat six on the first round of one, two, three, four, five, six carries over to the next count of six. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. And then we finish off this count of six with an up on beat number three, a pop on beat number four, and then an up, down, on like a semi bass sound moving back towards that open sound because of course when we go back to the beginning of the groove we're going to be playing that lovely big open sound so the, the second count of six has an upstroke on beat three pop on beat four and then up down on a bass sound getting ready to go back to the open sound for count number one And as I said, this is a really, really nice pattern to use when you're a little bit more confident with that jig formula, how jigs work. And you can throw this one in and people will be really impressed with this, I think at a session or in a jam. So that is the final groove for this tutorial on jigs. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments or any recommendations for future videos, please do leave them in the comments down there and I'll absolutely make sure to action them and do those videos for you all. Thanks so much for checking out this video and if you like this video, if you like the content that I'm pumping out on YouTube, you can subscribe to this channel and hopefully see you in the next video. All the very best. Bye now.